Next, we'd like to welcome Mr. Hussein Samitar uh, from the African Development Center. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmah. How do you want to accent? Good evening, everyone. It's my delight uh, to be with you tonight. Uh, first and foremost, let me take the opportunity to really thank uh, all the staff of IATP inviting us, coming out to our office, and participating as, we, as you were putting together this conference. But particularly, I wanted to thank Grad and his leadership within the organization. Tonight, <clears throat> what I would do tonight for you all is to tell you a little bit about myself, the African Development Center, uh, but above all, really, to tell you that how fascinating is the African community, especially when it comes to community economic development, and what they have done as an immigrant group that uh, within short period of time that was not done in the state of Minnesota. I, I hope you could all see uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to uh, take and use some slides and pictures so you could see all of it. Now, uh, let me go. I will take some of it and, and try to move around so I could see as Dale helps me out. All right? Let's get into it. <coughs> Next, Dale. <coughs> now, could you all see? Please try if you can. I'm just going to take some highlights as much as possible. Now, uh, I was invited a couple of times, but the last time, about two weeks ago, to go to Norway. As you know that, Somalia has seen a uh, non-ending civil war, which has taken its toll for the community for a long time. So I was invited uh, to come with a group from uh, Minnesotans, go to Norway, and compare uh, the success of the, uh, specifically the Somali community, in Minnesota and the Somali community in Norway. So this presentation uh, comes in, in that light. So now, my myself, let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, I came here, I am the, one of the early ones, in uh, December of 1993. And I was not speaking English. I grew up southern part of Somalia. The southern part of Somalia was an Italian colony. So therefore, I was very fluent in Italian, Somali, Arabic, but not English. So when I came over, I stayed, see the riverside. You all know see the riverside, don't you? That's right. So I stayed there, see the riverside. For the first three months, it was December, January, February, I wasn't able to get out of the house. So I stayed in the apartment and became an expert on all the daytime soap operas you could possibly imagine. Now, tonight, after the dance or the, the, the dinner, I would love to talk to you about the young and restless and bold and beautiful, all of that. So, I, I'm definitely ready for all the characters. So now I went back to school. I did an MBA in finance. Then I was very lucky to work for Norwest. Norwest became Wells Fargo. And then Wells Fargo, I was a banker, corporate banker, small business banker, then left 2003 to start the only uh, African community economic development that we are aware of in this state, but also nationwide. So now I have to, I have to take and I acknowledge tonight some of our partners in the greater Minnesota. This work is not possible without uh, three lovely gentlemen who are here. Sasso is here, Mohammed Ahmed, who is your own <laughs> local. <coughs> Thank you very much. We cannot do the work without, without them. Of course, uh, our, our man in Wilmer, Abdidur, is also here, and we are really, really grateful for that. <coughs> Uh, last but not the least, Sharif, uh, who is in Rochester, we really appreciate the work that you do to, to do. To <laughs> now, uh, that is really a little bit about me. Let's go to what has been happening, the African community in Minnesota. I hope these numbers would give you some context of how far and how fast in a very, very, very 
uh, small amount of time, the African uh, community came throughout Minnesota. Uh, Dale, if you go to the next slide. Uh, this was uh, just we, what we wanted to show the Norwegian of how the African community is becoming part of Minnesota. Now, if you go to the next slide quickly, <laughs> this is just a picture of the state of Minnesota that I wanted to show uh, our friends in Norway. But if you look at it, it's the whole landscape of the state. And the lower part, you would see now the new, the new Minnesotans. Next slide, Adele. Uh, this was just to comparing, but I think it would be good for you to know that. The economy of Minnesota is very highly diversified, as you know that. Our GDP of this state is about 5.2, uh, uh, and the, the people is about 5.2 million, and the GDP <coughs> is 260 billion. So Minnesota has a very diversified uh, economy. If you go to the next slide, just to give you some perspective, and uh, Mark left, but I, w I wish he was here to confirm, to give you some perspective. If you look here, 1896, in 1896, elections, the instructions of elections in Minnesota, we're talking about Minnesota, was held all these languages, nine of them, English, German, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, French, Czech, Italian, and Polish. Now, if you say uh, Spanish or Somali or Hmong, has to be on the ballot, people will say that's an American. Isn't that unbelievable? Isn't that unbelievable? Just look, nine languages. That was 1896. I will give you another, another context. 1910, 60% of the people of Minnesota were foreign born. Were foreign born like us, who were born outside. 60%. So now, 1910, we also had in Minnesota 23 foreign language daily newspapers. Let me say that. 23 foreign language daily papers in the state of Minnesota. So I just want you to know that uh, my friends, uh, the, the African community, this is an immigrant state. It is your state as anybody else. It is just how we feel about it and how we make it better. <laughs> so if you go now, it's only 5.1% 5, 5 are foreign born, the state of Minnesota. It's very, very. Dale, if you go to the next slide. Uh, Again, the African community's presence is everywhere. Uh, Jim just mentioned all the cities that you're all coming from, that you're all coming from to come to this event. I'm not going to repeat, but you are everywhere in the state of Minnesota. Next slide, Dale. Uh, I will give you some numbers just so you have some context. Minnesota ranks the 30th in the nation when it comes to the number of immigrants. In the state, we are the 30th. But when it comes to the refugees, which is the Somalis and the Liberians are part of that. We are the eighth. It's the eighth. So Minnesota sees basically more refugees than immigrants in the state of Minnesota. I will also tell you that there are about 135,000 African immigrants, African immigrants in Minnesota, 135,000. Now, that number is being disputed, and we are sticking with it unless somebody else could tell us a specific number that we could all rely on. So it's about 185,000. Now, uh, another thing I want to, to mention to you is that this is a very young community. The average age is 30 years old, 30 years old. So it's a very young and growing community. And finally, I just want to highlight to the Somalis is the largest uh, African community, and you have all your uh, information, 37% was, was, was mentioned, and then followed by the Liberian community, as you know that. Liberia also went through civil war during early 1990s. And then you have other communities like Ethiopians, Eritreans, but above all, you also have a large and growing West African community, such as Nigerians who speak English uh, before they came, uh, who are a little bit educated, also a little bit uh, uh, can be part of Minnesota quickly. Next slide. To give <coughs> now, I'm going to also give you some perspective. Uh, a greater percentage of the African community in the state of Minnesota is participating. Please look at this number. 75% of you are in the, in the labor force, 75%. Uh, that is, is the highest immigrant group anywhere uh, within the African community in the United, United States. 75% of you are participating in uh, the labor force. Now.